Hi, Mr. Green here again, and I'm going to be taking you through the second lesson of the forces topic, which is Key Stage 4, Year 11. And our second lesson, we'll be looking at how to calculate resultant forces that act at right angles to each other. Previous lesson, we looked at resultant forces in general. Um, I'm going to be recapping that briefly at the start of this lesson. Uh, I'll be going through the new content, and then I'll be giving you some questions to do, which you can pause the video and then restart it, and you can go through the answers with me in that case, making sure you've got them right. So the success criteria for today's lesson will be to calculate the resultant force when forces act at right angles to each other. So a quick recap of last lesson. We looked at resultant forces. If you remember, the resultant force is the overall force that acts on an object. On the slide here, you can see we have an object with two forces acting on it, five newtons to the right and seven newtons to the right. The resultant force would be a single force that has the same effect on that object. In this case, both those forces are acting in the same direction. So in order to do that, in order to calculate what the resultant force would be, we simply add those forces together. In this case, that would be five plus seven, giving us 12 newtons. But that's not the end of the story. Remember, forces are a vector quantity. Vector quantities have size and direction. So to give us the full answer, we'd need to state what size the force is and what direction it's acting. If we draw the resultant force, we'd see that it's all acting to the right. We've added those together, so the final answer would be 12 newtons to the right, resultant force in this case. We then looked at forces acting in opposite directions. So again, we have an object here where two forces are acting upon it. We have seven newtons acting to the left. We have five newtons acting to the right. In our previous example, they were both going in the same direction, so we added them. In this case, they're going in opposite directions, so what we would do is we would subtract those forces from each other. 7 take away 5 gives us 2, but again, that's not the end of the story. It's a vector quantity, so we have to assign a direction. In this case, the larger force is acting to the left, so the resultant force would act to the left as well. 7 take away 5 gives us 2, so our resultant force in this case is 2 newtons to the left. What about if they're acting at right angles though? Let's have a look at this example. We have an object with two forces acting upon it. One force is acting straight up, one force is acting to the right. We'd need our resultant force to be a single force that has the same effect on that object. So where would that be? How can we work that out? The way we'd work that out in this case is, first up, we have seven newtons acting up and five newtons to the right. In order to work out the direction and the size of the force, the first step we need to do is draw a little square here. So we have our little squares here, so a dotted line going across from the top of the 7 newtons going up from the 5 newtons. From there, we draw our little arrow in there. This arrow would show where the overall force would be, where the resultant force would be. So in this case, it would act in that direction. We'll talk about direction in a bit more detail later on. But how can we work out this value? How can we work out how big that force is? Well, if we look at that, if we look at the angle of the overall force, if we look at the other forces and we draw that in, we'll see we have a little triangle. We have a right angle triangle in this case. We know that the force acting up is seven newtons. And we know that the force acting across is five newtons. We know the direction in which that force is going to act. We'll assign that later. So how can we work out the size of this? How can we work out the size of the force? Well, if we assign them letters, if we say this is A, B, and C. If you think back to any math lessons you've done, anything where you're trying to work out the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, we would go with Pythagoras' theorem, where the hypotenuse or the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the other two sides added together. So a squared is b squared plus c squared. When we're presented with a problem like this, we just draw this out again, and we can then calculate the size of the force. So in this case, we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared. In this case, b is 7, c is 5. So a squared, the hypotenuse, is equal to 7 squared plus 5 squared. That would be 49 plus 25. 7 squared is 49, 5 squared is 25. Add those together, we have a squared is equal to 74. We now need a on its own. So if a squared is 74, 
the square root of 74 would give us A. The square root of 74 can be calculated as 8.6 newtons. So our resultant force in this case is 8.6 newtons. The reason I've written it out like this is if you are doing any sort of calculation during a science exam, it is better to put every single step in place there. You need to get used to doing that. You need to get used to writing it out. If you just finish up with a final answer and write that in there, if you've made any mistakes in your previous calculations, then your answer is going to be wrong. If you've wrote out step by step how you've done that, you may get extra credit for doing the right steps. You may be able to pinpoint where you've gone wrong and then give you marks previous to that. So please get used to writing out every single step where you're doing any sort of calculation. So we've worked out the size of our force. The size of our force here is 8.6 newtons. The direction, it can now be any angle. We can't just state the force is going left or right because our force could be acting to the north and to the east, to the west and to the south. It can be acting any of them. So we state this direction using compass points that we can see on that compass opposite. So we can say the force is going north, south, east, west. We can even say it's going northeast, northwest. Or we can say north, northeast, south, southeast, south, southwest, any of the direction points on the compass. That gives us our full answer because as it's a vector quantity, we have to give a size and we have to give a direction. So what I'd like you to do now is calculate the resultant force for these following examples. We've got questions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. If you pause the video, if you draw those out, if you work it out the way I've just shown you by drawing triangles, we should be able to work out what these answers are. So, take a bit of time, pause the video, and we'll start as soon as you want to pause. Okay, so question one. We have a force of two newtons acting to the north, and five newtons acting to the east. First step is to draw my triangle showing that happening. So we've got five newtons at the bottom, two newtons going to the north, and our overall force would be acting in that direction. It would be acting to the north and to the east. So we draw our hypotenuse in that direction. Add my figures to that. I've got five newtons at the bottom and two newtons to the north. We then go through Pythagoras' theorem. So if a squared is b squared plus c squared, a squared would be 5 squared plus 2 squared. Calculate those. 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4. Once we add those together, 25 added to 4 gives us 29. 29 would be the hypotenuse squared. So now we need to square root that. If A squared is 29, A would be the square root of 29. Use your calculator to calculate the square root of 29. That gives us a value of 5.39 newtons. That's not the end of our answer, though. We do need to assign a direction. So using our compass points, we can see that it's going to the north and to the east, giving us a northeast of the direction. Resultant force would be 5.39 newtons to the northeast. Question two. Three newtons acting to the east and seven newtons acting to the south. First step again is to draw our triangle out, ensuring that our hypotenuse is gonna go in the same direction that the resultant force would be going in. Three newtons to the east, seven newtons to the south. We would then use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate our value. So, three squared plus seven squared. Write this all out, three squared is nine, seven squared is 49. Add nine to 49 to give us 58. Square root 58 is 7.62. So we've got our value, 7.62 newtons. What about our direction? Using our compass points, we can see it's going to the east and to the south. So it gives us a southeasterly direction, giving our resultant force 7.62 newtons to the southeast. Question three, six newtons acting to the north, eight newtons acting to the west. First step again is to draw our triangle ensuring our hypotenuse goes in the same direction as the resultant force. We've got six newtons going to the north, eight newtons to the west, so we can use that to fill in Pythagoras' theorem. Eight squared plus six squared, so eight squared is 64, six squared is 36. Add those together, we get a value of 100. 100 is a squared, so the value of a would be the square root of 100. Square root of 100 is 10. Again, we need to assign a direction to give our answer in full. 
So we can see from the compass, this is acting to the north and to the east, sorry, to the west, giving us a northwesterly direction. Our resultant force would be 10 newtons to the northwest. Okay, question four, we have four newtons acting to the north and four newtons acting to the east. So again, we would draw our triangle out. So our triangle shows four newtons to the north, four newtons to the east, and it shows our resultant force acting in the same direction as it would do. So our hypotenuse is in the same direction as the resultant force. We've got our two values, so we can place those into Pythagoras' theorem. Four squared plus four squared, so that's 16 plus 16. 16 add 16 gives us 32, which is a squared. If a squared is 32, then a would be the square root of 32. The square root of 32 is 5.66, giving us a value of 5.66 newtons. Again, it's not the end of the story. We need to assign a direction. So looking at our compass points, we can see that the force is acting to the north and to the east, giving us a northeasterly direction, giving us a final answer of a resultant force of 5.66 newtons to the northeast. Question five. We have three newtons acting to the west and four newtons acting to the south. First step is to draw our triangle, four newtons to the south, three newtons from the west, and we can see again our hypotenuse would show the direction of the resultant force. We've got our two values, we can place that into Pythagoras. A squared is B squared plus C squared, so three squared plus four squared. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16. Nine add 16 would give us 25. The square root of 25 give us A, which is five newtons. Again, we need to assign direction, so we look at our compass points. We can see it's acting to the west and to the south, giving us a southwesterly direction. Our resultant force would be 5 newtons to the southwest. Okay, final question, question 6. We changed it around with some decimal, uh, decimal figures, but our approach doesn't change. So we have 8.6 newtons to the north, 3.2 newtons to the east. Our approach is the same, we add our triangle, 8.6 newtons to the north, 3.2 newtons to the east, giving us a hypotenuse that will act in the same direction as the resultant force. Put those figures in, 8.6 squared plus 3.2 squared, 8.6 squared is 73.96, 3.2 squared is 10.24, add those together to give us a value of 84.2. If a squared is 84.2, then A would be the square root of 84.2, giving us a value of 9.18 newtons. Again, it's not the end of the answer. We need to assign a direction. So we use our compass points. We can see it's going to the north and to the east, giving us a northeasterly direction, giving us a resultant force of 9.18 newtons to the northeast. OK, I hope that was useful for you. You can now do resultant forces acting on the same plane or acting at right angles to each other. Next lesson, we're going to be looking at... Um, Newton's laws of motion, quick whiz through all three forms of motion, all three laws of motion and some examples of those. Uh, please review this video whenever you see fit, uh, go over it again and again to make sure you've got the right answers and any questions at all just let us know at school. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.